The next question is, what is temporary music and what is temp love? Okay, let me explain something. When a movie is being edited and you're not hired yet as a composer, the film editor wants to have some music to cut the film against. So he will pick pieces of music that he likes and he starts editing the film. By the time you come in as a composer, there is technically already a score, which is not yours, um, but it's music that sits there for the time being, just to give the film some shape and to make it a more pleasurable experience to, uh, to watch. Um, and this is called temporary music. Now, temp love, which is falling in love with the temporary music, happens when um, a picture editor and a director are working on a certain section of the film, let's say for a couple of months, and they're constantly listening to that same piece of music that is there. They fall in love with that piece of music, they fall in love with how the music works with the picture. So if you as a composer come with a completely different approach to that scene, that might sometimes be a problem where they say, but can't you do something a little more closer to what was there because we loved it so much? And that is what temp love is called. Um, every composer in town has dealt with it. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a standard phenomenon and it's very understandable. That's why in my case, it's so important to or start on a movie where there's no music yet uh, or make already music for a movie that you haven't even seen, so that when the picture editor starts editing the film, he already has some music from you, so he starts to understand and the director what the tone is of the, of the, of the film. And um, another thing that you can do is quickly try to replace uh, scenes that have music in it that already feels very important to the director. So that means that if you start on that scene first, you have the longest time to work on it. If you start on that scene at the last moment, then that might really become a problem to get to the finish line. So usually I try to tackle scenes um, that have a very important piece of music in it. Um, and usually this is a, a piece of music that I already did myself because the music editors that I work with uh, when they make that temporary score, they usually use music from the movies that I have done to cover the film instead of music from other composers. Now, other composers sometimes have different preferences. There are composers that say, I don't want to hear the temporary music. There are also composers that say, if you make a temporary music track, only use music from other composers. Don't use my music. Uh, so every composer has a different preference, every music editor has a different preference, preference. I also like to point out that it is a special profession in town that music editors that do the temporary music are usually separate music editors than the music editors that work with the composer. Uh, so usually these are two separated um, uh, jobs. But temporary music is very important to get structured to the film right at the beginning but it's so much better if there's already music in there that is yours that you written originally for the film. But unfortunately, not every composer has a chance to do that because of timing, scheduling, um, whether you already feel inspired to write something for the film. Sometimes you feel inspired when you see the film, sometimes you're not inspired yet by the script. So there are many different uh, parameters that are in play, whether you actually are able to make music that early for a film. But let's now go back to one more example of Mad Max. When Ma I saw Mad Max, there were two or three small pieces of music in the whole film and the rest was just empty. So I had completely free range to completely come up with ideas for that film without being distracted with what was being used in the, in the temp score. So I hope that answers that question.